welcome back to the channel it's been a couple of weeks since I posted anything uh, but uh, I'm outside in Edinburgh at the moment uh, it's a Friday afternoon and uh, it's about minus 407 degrees Kelvin or something it's very very cold but it is a gorgeous day it's beautifully bl blue sky it's about minus two actually uh, out here in the back garden but I'm going to talk very briefly about this film, Die Hard. I went to see this film in 1988 when it came out. Uh, I was in the army at the time uh, and it was uh, a friend of mine had been to see it and said, oh, you must go and see this, you must go and see this. So uh, I went and saw it in Oxford in 1988. I was at a, an army unit near, near Oxford. and I, th I think I'd seen a trailer for it and I thought, you know, it's something to do on a Saturday. Uh, but I went to it and I was blown away. I thought it was a great film, thrilling, exciting. Uh, it was just, I'd, I'd never seen anything quite like it before. But what really, what really did it for me was uh, in the 80s, most of the films had these kind of generic kind of rock scores and full of rock songs and, uh, and, and then the soundtracks came out and all the soundtracks were, were just song lists. And if you were lucky, you've got a, a touch of uh, the score with it you know one track but i saw die hard and what and what what what, what the, the cherry on the cake for, for me was just a wonderfully orchestral score uh by michael Kamen, and i just thought it was brilliant and it just it just made the film that extra little bit special and it still does 30 what 34 years later nearly 35 years later uh and I thought, oh, you know, there's, there's hardly any songs in this film. Maybe when the soundtrack comes out, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just get the soundtrack to the film. No. The only uh, release of any score for any years was uh, on a Varese album, uh, which I'll show you a picture of here, uh, from 1988, which was Screen Themes, which was just a collection of the, the kind of uh, music from the year's films. And it had uh, a track called The Terrorists on and for 14 long years that was the only way you could get any score i believe uh from die hard uh now i believe uh in 2002 uh Varez released the first soundtrack for for die hard 2002 that's incredible excuse the nose blowing i'm still getting over a slight cold uh but yeah, and then it was another nine years or so before we got a two-disc release from La La Land, which was uh, which was the first version that I ever got, which is which is this one. Uh, I'd been wanting the score for Die Hard for so long, uh, so it was great when this when this two-disc uh, almost complete version came out. Uh, and then a few years later, 2017, 2018, uh, the 30th uh, anniversary three disc version which is this little beauty here uh, three discs of awesomeness uh, the score to Die Hard now it wasn't until the, these two versions by La La Land came out that uh, you know I'm reading the the notes in that that you know I did the score was just in, in ingrained in my in 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 my soul that's that's a bit pretentious but you know it's a memorable score uh, but there were little kind of motifs uh, during the film and one of them was uh, based on I'm singing in the rain which I, ne I never knew but you know having heard it dee, 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 it's I'm singing in the rain and they got the rights to use that uh, but it never occurred to me that, that that's what that was uh, you know the, the backbone of the, the original Die Hard score was uh, Beethoven's Ninth, uh, which which was spun all the way through the film, uh, and that's the way they they did the following two films as well. There was uh, there was a, a backbone of music to, to, to the films. Uh, Die Hard Two, Die Harder on the posters, but just Die Hard Two on screen uh, came out in 1990, uh, but that had a score straight away this Varese release uh, which had a limited score on it but it was good but it, I always thought the sound on this one was a bit muddy uh, but at least it got a soundtrack release uh, which was good uh, but again this was directed by Rennie Harlin uh, a Finnish director uh, and 
he asked for Finlandia to be kind of uh, threaded through the score. So the backbone to this score was Finlandia. Uh, luckily, Varez did a diehard, uh, uh, sorry, a diehard, uh, a deluxe edition. Uh, uh, quite a few years later, when was this? 2012, the deluxe edition of the Die Hard 2 score came out. So we got the complete score, hopefully. Uh, and to me, the sound on this is so much better than that uh, original 1990 release. But anyway, the final film, or final film, uh, the third film in, in a kind of loose trilogy, uh, uh, the third of Michael Kamen's anyway, Die Hard with a Vengeance, again, it got a, uh, a score CD uh, when the film first came out, but again, it, there was a huge amount of music not present on this, including the backbone of the score, all the uh, When Johnny Comes Marching Home stuff. I'm just going to take a quick break here, because my nose is running like a good in, in this minus 38 degree weather. Give me a second. <laughs> And we're back. Uh, yeah. Backbone of the score, when Johnny comes marching home. None of that appeared on that. Uh, until we got another La La Land expansion. Again in 2012. Now, it was, uh, it was, I, didn't, I didn't get this in 2012. I got this uh, a, a number of years later. Uh, and this was a, a, bit, a bit of a holy grail for me. Uh, I'd, I'd been eyeing this ever since it came out. But... Uh, yeah, and it was just great to have all that stuff. And there is a huge amount of stuff on this. Uh, but again, John McT McTiernan, who directed this, and he directed the original one, uh, was a bit cavalier with uh, his place in music. Uh, I mean, I think Michael Kamen wrote a huge amount of music, and it was just used all over the place. But it, wor it, wor it works well. But this has all the uh, When Johnny Comes Marching Home stuff. So, I mean, if you can track this down, this is, this is the version to get. And it has uh, the most storming version of when Johnny comes marching home uh, on this one as well, uh, which runs over the beginning of the end credits, uh, and it's on this, and that's that's the version. I, ever since first seeing the film, when those end credits start coming, I was thought, oh, got to get the soundtrack. Wasn't on it, crushed, but it's on this, so that's the one to get. But as for the films, I love the film. I do you know what I like all the Die Hard films. I mean, the two later ones, uh, Live Free or Die Hard, or Die Hard 4.0 as it was known, and uh, A Good Day to Die Hard. Was that the last one? That the last one was r roundly kind of trashed, and but I I really enjoyed it. It's just a, an entertaining film. It's not up to par with the, the earlier ones, but hey, it's still entertaining. So. I'm fine with it. Uh, but yeah, the films are great. The music, and I've got, have I got too many CDs of Die Hard music? No, is the answer to that one. The music is fantastic, and it just showed me that orchestral music in the 80s for action films was still the way to go. It, 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 it just, Die Hard was a great film. If it had had a, a, a generic rock pop score, it would have still been a good film, but the score made it great. Uh, that's it for the, the quick Die Hard overview and the Die Hard music. But, as I said earlier, I'm going to be reviewing these Goldsmith at 20th. That's it, 20th, not 20th Century Fox, even though it is. Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I'll be doing reviews of those soon. Uh, so thanks you, thank you, thanks you, thank you again, uh, Daniel, for sending me these for Christmas. Very much appreciated, more than appreciated. Uh, but that's it for now. I'm going to go inside now. I'm freezing my tits off out here. You might have heard a thump on the floor. That was my tits hitting the floor. Uh, so uh, until next time, good day. <laughs>